blame you or my wi-fi i am not sure which one it is the button to press to go live was grayed out for far too long and i was starting to get a little bit panicky but we're here we are here i say we i mean me it's just me obviously i'm here i am alone apart from my dogs that may bark disclaimer dogs may bark during this live video because i have a piece of furniture <laughs> that is due to be collected by a courier that has sold and he messaged me and said can I come between two and three I was like oh. slight clash of um the program here so what I've done is I've told him where it is it's located in my house I've told him to enter the building take the piece of furniture that's wrapped with the address and the telephone number for the customer on it and see himself out kindly see yourself out sir so the dogs might go crazy because intruder alert and all that i can't see anybody on here oh one person one person's just jumped on i'm hoping that youtube starts pushing it out it takes a minute it takes a minute for it to ping up and say i'm live so that's why i rattle on about nonsense for the very start of this live because it kind of doesn't kick in for a minute or two so apologies if you're watching this back on replay because you just had to listen to me talk nonsense um <laughs> you came to listen to my voice stalker alert hi jackie um so that's what's going on in the background dogs might bark furniture's being collected by a courier i don't know about anybody else um but i've had a massive flurry of sales and i can't keep up i am not complaining um but it is it's keeping me on my toes put it that way um so this week i was talking to um hi sharon i was talking well it's it's super cold there it is blowing a gale out here blowing an absolute gale um i've had to button down the hatches because she's a windy one out there this week's video, I have been talking to the people at Dixie Bell and these Back to Basics videos are being very well received. So they have had some messages to say that they are really doing well and they're successful and they're useful, blah, 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 blah. Talk about giving me an ego. Give me a big head, guys. Tell me I'm good at something. Um, no, but sometimes it's hard to gauge how your content is received if you don't get any feedback so feedback's good so from what i can gauge and from what the people at dixie bell can gauge um you're loving the back to basics so i'm going to continue with the back to basics for a little while i'm not even going to paint today you're just going to sit there and listen to me talk and you will enjoy it so today's lesson <laughs> today's back to basics is brushes and brush care so let's just cut straight to the chase shall we dixie bell brushes are the best brushes in the world the end goodbye it's been fun no um yeah it's awesome that people are giving feedback to dixie bell i totally agree um also keeps me on my toes make sure and i'm behaving staying on the straight and narrow not getting too um too silly too carried away um so brushes and brush care i'm going to quickly whiz through what i use the brushes for now let me tell you this paint brushes are designed to apply paint onto things there aren't really any rules not really you can put it on however you like but when i first started out i bought some very cheap and nasty brushes very quickly learned that spending a little bit more money on a very good quality brush gives you a better outcome for whatever finish it is that you are looking for whether it's textured smooth whatever whatever paint it is you're using as well so that can make a difference to the paintbrush and the paint that you're pairing together so that's obviously to bear in mind but also remember that there are more than one ways to skin a cat and i don't like saying that because it sounds ever so cruel but you get what i'm trying to say 
So I could go ahead and paint something in my way and with the way that I use brushes and then somebody else could go, go oh, well, I wouldn't do that. I'd use it a different way. I am not here to tell you how to paint. If you already know that and you've already got a way to do it, you crack on, you crack on. I These Back to Basics are designed for people that are new or maybe have just started and they look at the Dixie Bell website or they walk into a Dixie Bell retailer because make sure you're supporting Dixie Bell retailer. Go into a Dixie Bell shop that sells Dixie Bell paint and go and buy some. Um, that's just, it's not a threat. It's just, it's just a request. Um, so they might walk in, see all these paintbrushes hanging up, utter confusion, and they might not know what paintbrush is best to do what with. So I'm going to help out a little bit and I'm going to tell you what I use the brushes for. Like I say, this, don't, don't go out and change what you're doing if it works for you already. Don't, don't do that. Just, it's just, just what I'm doing. Just what I do. So there's loads of synthetic brushes in the Dixie Well range. There's really only two types of brushes. There's synthetic and there's natural bristle. Synthetic means it's man-made. Natural bristle means it's natural bristle. It's come from something like an animal. So a lot of these are boar hair, I believe. Um, now, they just they just create two different types of finishes. So I'll, I'll quickly run through the synthetic. I don't want to bore you, but I do want to try and help out if possible. So uh, where do we start? There are flat brushes. Obviously, it is flat. There's several of these. And then there are brushes that are round. Okay? So, some people prefer a flat brush. Some people prefer a round brush. I chop and change between the two. Um, where it really comes down to it is I find the smaller brushes. So, obviously, smaller brushes... If you start out, you might think, oh, I'll buy a small brush because they're not as expensive and you're a bit daunted by a big brush. Obviously, big brushes are going to hold more paint. Um, just Dixie Bell have a list of what to use each brush for so we can hang it, have it hanging in our retail stores as well. Um, do they? I'm not really sure, actually. I've never seen anything on the website. Um It's hard because people use different brushes for different things. I might use a brush for a stencil technique and then somebody would be like oh no I wouldn't use that brush so it's quite hard um but I haven't seen one so you might be daunted by a big old brush like this but what I will say is it holds more paint covers the area quicker so I really only use small brushes for very small intricate detail um or if it is a really small piece so a jewelry box or a craft item that's when these come out I generally use a larger brush and that is because I mainly do do large pieces of furniture. If you are crafting, obviously, oh, and that just reminds me, I haven't got the artist brushes out. Um, if you are crafting and doing smaller projects, maybe I'm thinking um, like a little stool or like I say, crafty pieces, jewellery boxes, a tray, those kind of things, you might want to stick to something like this kind of size versus something, obviously you can see the size difference, this kind of size would be obviously for bigger kind of pieces, that's how I look at it personally, again with large brushes it's very, uh, with round brushes sorry, it's very similar, so this is obviously going to hold a lot more paint and cover a surface area quicker, than what this does. Now there are oval and round brushes within the rounder brushes. Stay with me people. So they're the ovals, they're the rounds. Oval is just what it says, it's just an oval shaped brush and the rounds are quite small. Now what I will say is if you're doing um, kind of spindles or chair legs or stool legs, a round brush will get you less drip marks than what a flat brush does. Because if you imagine a flat brush trying to paint a spindle, you've obviously got a lot of bristle kind of either side of it and it kind of splays out and that's when you get your drips down, down your chair legs and your stool legs and it can be very infuriating. A round brush is designed to kind of hug the bristle better. So I don't know if I can, 
you see what I'm trying to say? So it doesn't kind of splay out either side because it's a rounded, kind of hugs the hugs the shape better. So if you've got like spindly things, banisters, little things like that, generally speaking, round brushes are better for those kinds of things. So that's very, very roughly. And this is, don't judge me on the state of my brushes, okay? We're not here to judge, we're here to learn, okay? I'll look at you. We are not here to judge, we are here to learn, okay? So that's synthetic. So synthetic is generally gonna give you a smoother finish versus a natural bristle brush. There, like I say, this this list that I'm giving you is not, it's not like a sort of, you must do this with a flat brush, you must do this with a synthetic brush. There's so many different uses. I could probably bat on for about an hour about paintbrushes. I'm not gonna, because that would be boring. I'd probably have nobody watching me and you'll have all fallen asleep. But what I'm trying to say is, there's no, there's no right or wrong. I'm just helping you choose maybe if you've, gone into a shop or a store and you're new to it and you see all of these and you think help um you might want to it, it might help it might not you might think who is this crazy person that i'm listening to and why am i listening to her so as well as those brushes that i've just shown you in the synthetic range there are also two brushes with short handles so these are very good if you are have maybe dexterity issues. So I suffer with carpal tunnel. Generally speaking, the shorter handle brushes help me better or a, a little bit more comfortable than a longer brush, especially if I'm painting for a long period of time. Now, that's not always, but dexterity wise, they are a lot easier to kind of handle because you haven't got a long, a long kind of handle around. Also, if you're doing on the inside of cupboards and stuff, these are going to fit. Whereas the ones with the long handles, obviously, you've got that extra little bit to contend with. And there's two of them. This is called the mini. And this is called the mini angled and that has got a chiseled edge so that is really good for cutting in to your kind of corners if you're doing cabinetry work or anything like that that is a really good brush for that it gives you a really good crisp line so i painted my skirting boards with this which is i don't think you call them skirting boards in the us you call them baseboards i'm learning i'm learning so it's really good for getting a nice crisp line. I painted all my baseboards with these um, and it got a really nice crisp edge. So like I say, they're both synthetic. They've both got the short handles. It's just that one has got like the, the angled sort of edge. Um, I would say that brush is the most used brush, if you can't tell from the state of it. Again, not here to judge. Um, if you can't tell from the state of it, which brings me, um, I'll bring, we'll bring them around to the cleaning part afterwards. Um, this is probably the one that I use the most. Um, it is such a good brush. It's a good all rounder. It's got a decent size sort of, um, it's got decent size bristles on it. It's not too small, but it just, it just fits so nice in your hand and it's nice and lightweight and good, good all rounder. Oh, thank you for the feedback. I'm so glad this is helping because, you know, Sometimes I feel like I'm just sitting here rambling um, and I've had too much caffeine and I just, when I finish, I think, do I actually make any sense then or, or not? And I am apologise. If you wanted to see me paint today, then you're going to be bitterly disappointed because we're not. In fact, I'll show you what I'm doing. I'm actually stripping this piece. This was given to me, already painted. Um, so I'm stripping it because... Well, I don't want to add another layer of paint onto something, um, so I'm stripping it. You don't want to see me stripping paint. I get high as a kite. I start acting more silly than usual. Um, yeah, it's generally a bit weird, so we'll save that. Save that for another day. So, natural bristle brushes. I think the only one that I don't have here, natural bristle brush-wise, is a chip brush the two inch chip brush which is like a couple of dollars i've got the premium chip brush which i use a lot 
Um, again, as you can tell, <laughs> very well used, but I love these brushes. Um, so I think that's the only one, but it looks almost identical. It's just that these bristles are slightly higher quality than the cheaper chip brush. So this is the premium and it's a, you can see it's a flat brush. Now, this for me is an all rounder, but that is because of the style that I paint the most has texture and layers and effects and that kind of thing. So this, this is my kind of all rounder because I can apply paint in a stippling motion, which is where you stab the surface. And, and sort of pounce on it. Let's not use the word stab, it's aggressive. Let's use the word pounce. So pounce, that's a much softer word, isn't it? So I pounce the surface to create texture. I also apply wax with these. I do lots and lots of different things. So if you wanna see how I paint and what I use, make sure you do subscribe to my channel, um, which is called Faf Designs. Um, I don't know why I held a paintbrush when I said that. Designs. So these are all the natural bristle brushes. I think I've got them all. Here's one as well. I've segregated this because um, it's got Big Mum's butter on it. So I'll run through them quickly. This is the La Petite brush. It's got a tapered end, which means it's pointy. Natural bristles. This is really good for applying wax, for decorative effects. Again, texture and things like that because a natural bristle brush will give you texture as opposed to synthetic which are the ones i've just shown you which are more sort of laying the paint out smooth this as you can see the bristles are quite clogged up on this this is because i use big mama's butter quite a lot in my um interiors of cabinets and stuff and i just allocate one of these brushes just to use with big mama's butter that way i don't have to keep washing it out so that's that brush the Best Dang brush. So it's not tapered, it's got a completely flat surface, but it is huge. Again, I use this quite a lot, blending, layering, dry brushing, applying wax, loads and loads of different uses. If you watch Melissa from the Top Draw RVA, she pretty much uses these to blend all the time. So you can apply two colors, and then just swirl it and it will literally blend them together for you. It's a really good brush for blending. Also, thank you to my PA who was just piped up, Jackie. Checks in the post, as always. Stenciling, absolutely epic brush for stenciling, especially if you've got a large surface to do because it covers the surface so quickly. And obviously when you're stenciling, you do ideally want a flattish surface on a paintbrush so that you're not sort of um put in sort of a if you've got a tapered end so if you're using something like this for stenciling what's going to happen is you're going to put that point on the surface first and you're not going to get an even distribution of the paint so it's more likely to be kind of patchy so that's why most stencil brushes are kind of flat so thank you jackie again a great stencil brush We've just talked about this, premium chip brush. Love these bad boys. A French tip, I had a little, a little moment there where I forgot. Um, as you can see, this has got brown wax on it because I do use these for finer detail of wax. But again, not exclusively, you don't have to use it exclusively for wax. You can use these for adding paint or layers or dry brushing, but it has got a pointy end. So it's got a uh, tapered end which allows you to get into detail. So if you are waxing something that's got maybe carved detail, that's a really good one to go for. The Big Daddy, which you've just got to love the name of that, haven't you? Um, just buy it for the name. <laughs> I've got a Big Daddy um, in my conservatory. So yeah, it sounds a bit weird when you say that. Um, this is a brush that was released with Terra, but again, you don't have to exclusively use it with Terra. Um, it's flat and it's a really good one for blending. Again, if you apply two colours of Terra, sort of layer them next to each other and just do that with this brush, it just blends them together really nicely. Again, it's huge, so you can cover really big surfaces as well. And then this, these, this is actually one of my favourite brushes. So this is called the Bell Brush. And I'm going to lump it together with 
the natural bristle brushes but it's actually a synthetic brush that behaves a little bit like a natural bristle brush so out of all the natural bristle brushes it's actually very soft it's sort of rounded can you see it's like a it's not flat and it's not pointy it's sort of rounded i love this i think it's such a good brush it's very soft so it's not as coarse as the other natural bristle brushes, but it's not as soft as the synthetic. So these aren't actually natural bristle brushes anymore. They used to be. So if you've got old stock of these, um, I've got an older one that is natural bristle brushes and you can tell the difference. The smoother ones have got slightly lighter coloured bristles. Um, and it it's an all rounder. I actually paint with this. I dry brush with this. I also stencil with this. Um, smaller sort of areas um i've actually just done a stencil using this actually um so yeah that's that's something it's like a little kind of like an all-rounder but again it depends on your style of painting so if you want a really beautiful smooth finish on the top of a buffet or something you aren't going to use that you are going to use probably something like that so you're not going to use something like this you need something like that <clears throat> so not only does it make a difference on the paint you're using and the thing that you prefer to use it also makes a difference on the outcome of the piece so if i was painting in silk and i wanted to just have a really clean one color finish on a piece i wouldn't use that i'd use that so where are we at okay a couple more brushes these are also um, relatively new to Dixie Belle. So these are foam and dandy brushes. It's a foam brush. You can paint with these. I use these for top coating. I prefer brushes, an actual brush with bristle. That's my stool, by the way, creaking. Got to get some WD-40 on that bad boy. Um, but top coating with these is an absolute game changer. I, I, I don't like top coating. I don't like it. I'm a wax fan. I like waxed finishes. I always have done. From the day that I started painting, I've always liked a wax finish. I like how it looks, I like how it applies. But from time to time, I do have to apply a top coat for higher durability or to change the sheen level, whatever. These bad boys. These are the best thing that I've ever found for top coating. And I've tried a lot. I've tried rollering, I've tried brushing. I haven't ever tried spraying because I feel like I do feel like I'd get in a mess and I don't have anywhere to spray anyway but these have changed I'm not going to say changed my life but they definitely changed my top coat game they're brill and they come in three sizes so that's those and then oh uh brush care very important so if you are spending money on an expensive brush, the last thing you want to do is do what I do um, and let them get like that. You see here, we've got a couple of tide marks because what's happened here is I have allowed the paint to stay on that bristle for too long and then it's dried and then it doesn't want to wash off. So I've got a couple of solutions for that as well. So obviously you buy some expensive brushes, you want to look after them. If you look after your paintbrushes, they will last you. <coughs> I didn't know whether that was going to be a cough or a sneeze. I'm glad it wasn't both because that would have been weird. <coughs> um, if you look after your brushes, excuse me, by the way, that was, that was weird. Um, it's because I sit in this conservatory all day and I don't talk to anyone and I've just talked non-stop for 23, 24 minutes. It makes my voice weird. So... If you're buying in a high quality brush, you're gonna to wanna to look after it. Um, for, there's still an offer on actually. Um, if you buy any synthetic brush, you get a free, how how cute is that? It's actually called Cutie as well. Um, you get a free bottle of brush cleaner. So this is called Clean as a Whistle. And 
this will even shift dried on paint. So every now and again, what I do is I give my brushes like a little bit of a spa day because I use my brushes every day, all day. I'm painting all the time. I don't always have time to wash my br brushes bef in between use. So I'll wrap them up in cling film or I'll dump them in a bucket, which is not best practice, ideally, but we move. So every now and again, I'll soak them in this. Make sure you're soaking it in a cup that is, or a bowl that's not plastic because it's got natural oils in it, which will eat away at plastic. So do it in something that's like ceramic or an old mug or a glass or something. Um, pour this in. You can dilute it if you want to. I usually use it neat. Just whack it in. Stand your brush in it. Make sure that it's not sort of above that bit, which is called the ferrule. That's the metal bit. Just make sure it's your bristles in it. And what it will do is it will start sort of breaking down any dried on paint. Now, I have tried this with a solid paintbrush. I've also tried this on a brush that I left Boss Primer on and Slick Stick. And it took it off. So if you do feel like you've ruined a paintbrush or you've done what I've done and there's like a build up here of, of product, this stuff will start to sort of eat away at it. And then what I usually do is I just brush it with a knit comb. You can buy them dead cheap off Amazon. And that removes all of the softened paint off the bristles and then just wash it out and you will pretty much have a brand new paintbrush. That is how awesome this product is. Daily, everyday use, I use a scrubby soap. These are pretty good as well. Um, so it's a scrubby that's got a block of soap kind of melted into it. And I just scrub it all and then I do my hands most of the time. Sometimes I just leave paint on my hands. But I just kind of scrub it off. And this is good for when you've just, you know, when your paint's wet. If your paint's dried on or you've got sort of tide marks or a build up of product, this is a really good product to use. So I have talked non-stop at you. I do feel like that I could, like I said, I could talk about paintbrushes for an hour, easily an hour, and probably still have more to say. But the main things to, to bear in mind is the outcome that you want on your piece. So do you want it textured? Do you want it smooth? Are you working on a large piece? Are you working on a small craft item? Also, there's artist brushes. I, they're over there somewhere. Basically, they are they they are artist brushes. Very tiny, hand painting detail. Great for if you're hand painting a bit of gold or beautiful detail. Tiny, tiny, weeny little artist brushes. So hand painting stuff. So yeah, is your piece huge? Is it small? Do you want textured? Do you want smooth? That will determine whether you want a large brush or a small brush or whether you want natural bristle or synthetic. And then from there, you really just have to narrow down a little bit about personal preference and kind of getting to know what suits your painting style best, which comes with experience and time. But also, um, it just it just really kind of it does it does make a difference it does make a huge difference on the piece and the the, the outcome that you want so if i want a really heavily textured piece i'm not going to use a synthetic brush i just wouldn't because it wants the paint to lay flat it just holds the paint in a certain way and applies the paint in a certain way um equally if you are a user of silk mineral paint for example you're not going to have you're not going to apply silk with this unless you want a textured finish because that's what you will get. You will get brush strokes, you'll get marks if you use silk with a brush like this. So there are there are better matches than others. Like I say, there's no rules. You absolutely can use silk with this brush. You can apply silk with your hair if you wanted to. You could just roll it on with your hand. You can do whatever you want. You can apply that paint however you like. But... Is it going to give you the best finish? Is it going to give you a really smooth, beautiful, flawless finish if you use that with silk? Probably not. So it's a little bit about matching paint with brushes, so tools with paint and all that kind of thing. Um, 
and it's also knowing the outcome that you want. But what I will say is, it's definitely worth investing in a couple of decent brushes. You don't need all of these brushes. I have them because I'm a brand ambassador. I use them, I abuse them, I get to know them, and then I can tell you what's best for you. So if somebody contacted me and said, I've got a really large buffet that I want to do in this colour, in this finish, what brush should I use? I'd be able to tell them from my experience what I would recommend as the best tool for that. So <clears throat> when I started out, I think I had two brushes, one for paint, one for wax, and I had them for ages. Um, when I bought my decent ones, when I bought my cheap ones, I was like, no, 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 this is not the way. So I invested in a good quality brush for painting and a wax brush, because like I say, I'm a person that applies wax finishes to quite a lot of stuff. Um, and I had those for absolutely ages, absolutely ages before I invested in another brush, because they are expensive, they are an investment, but if you look after them, they will last absolutely ages. Um, I've still got the original brushes that Dixie Bell sent me um, over two years ago when I was a content creator. Uh, so they do last a very long time. Um, and they're just brilliant quality. They're just, they are fabulous brushes, like so good. And these are actually handmade um, in small quantity as well. So that's another thing that's amazing. Like they are not mass produced brushes that are kind of shipped in from goodness knows where, they are made, I think, by a man in Florida, which is obviously where Dixie Bell is, and he just makes them in, like, small batches, and they're all handmade, um, and the quality of the bristles is just absolutely phenomenal. They're so soft. Um, they are, and I'm not saying this because I'm a Dixie Bell brand ambassador, they are the the best paint brushes um, that I think I've tried. They're just, they're just fabulous brushes. So I hope that helps. I hope that wasn't just a jumble of craziness. And don't worry, next week we'll get back to some painting. It'll still be back to basics, something, but it'll be painting. Ah, oh, the scarlet, I forgot about that. Thanks, Jackie. You geek, hang on. I don't actually know where the scarlet's made. So I'm just talking about the, the synthetic brushes with that colour bristle, they're the ones that are made in small batches by a guy, I think in Florida, don't quote me on it. But they are the small, sort of businessy, handmade um, brushes. This is a, this is also, <clears throat> Jackie, maybe you should be a brand ambassador. Maybe you should come and do this these videos because you clearly remember more than me. Um, this is this is a synthetic brush this isn't the set i don't think this is made by the same company as the other ones um but obviously it has it has no handle it has no no handle um i like this for layering i also like this for top coats it's quite good for top coats the bristles are a little bit more kind of rigid than the other ones the other ones are a lot softer and a little bit more flexible these ones kind of like buying straight back up bye, bye, bye. <laughs> bye, bye, bye. um so yes and this is also really good with silk very very good for silk paint as well so yeah i forgot them um i've probably forgot something else as well because that's just how i roll i was going to write notes for this and then i thought i'm not going to read them so there's no point there's no point because when i come on a live i get sidetracked I go off on a tangent, I start talking nonsense, I read the comments, and then before I know it, I've forgotten something. So anyway, I really hoped that that half an hour ramble about brushes helped people that are maybe starting out, not sure what to choose, not sure what brush to go for, for that particular job. Um, if you've got any specific questions that you want to ask me, drop me a message on Facebook or Instagram or any of the places that I am at. You can find me on all the social media platforms except Twitter at Faf Designs. I think that might be the courier. The dogs haven't barked. Great guard dogs, guys. Great. Um, if you've got any specific questions, like I say about Dixie Bell, just drop me a message or at Faf Designs. If you want to follow me and find out what I use all these brushes for and find out about my style of painting, um, head over to Faf Designs on YouTube. Check me out over there. 
and I think that's it. We'll get back to painting next week. As always, if you've got any questions again about this particular video, you can drop them in the comments below. I'll come back to them in the next couple of days or so. Um, if you've got any requests, easy for me to say, about content for this channel lives in the future, about what you want to see me do back to basics, hit me up, leave them in the comments as well. And I will catch you next week. Same time next week. Thanks for watching. Have a lovely day. Bye.